Hello, my friends. I want to explain today why it seems like your brain is attacking you sometimes in this process. When it's meant to be, again, your survival mechanism, the, the, the design is for it to keep you alive and yet it's attacking you. There's a couple of pieces of information to keep in mind with this. Number one is that your brain is designed to look out for negative input because that's more significant to your survival than positive. One great example I read one time is if you're walking past an apple tree and you see a snake in it, you're going to notice that because in that moment, that's life or death. The apples, great, expected to be there. Not, a, not an immediate threat. Number two is that your brain loves what's familiar because it's predictable. If our brain can predict what's going to happen next, even if it's horrible and awful, it feels safe. That's just an aspect of brain function. The last bit is that we need our needs to be met. On a, at a, about two thirds of the time, especially as infants, to start to feel like the world is a safe place, that our need for regulation, whatever our needs may be, whether it's food or you know someone, a, a parent holding you with regulating input, containment, warmth, a steady heartbeat, steady breathing, that regulates your nervous system and signals safety to your brain and body on a deep level. And whether or not those needs are met as adults, if we have enough stress over time, we will become dysregulated and we will be in that state again of having a nervous system that's very akin to that of an infant where we have these needs for regulation. We need, if, if over the course of your life, you have not been responded to by others or life or yourself, and this is 99.999% uh, of the time, not your fault at all, 100% um, of the time, really. We, most of the time we don't know how to do this, but if we, if our need, our, if these needs we have to be seen, to be met, to be responded to, to receive encouragement, information about how the world works, love, acceptance, um, a hug, you know, a warm place to live, whatever our basic needs are as human beings, if those aren't met over time, we end up in a chronic state of dysregulation, which to translate that into English is you don't feel okay. You feel deeply not okay. So your survival mechanism is like, okay. And also your survival mechanism can only tell you what's wrong. It can't give you solutions. That's your job. This, your limbic system, this part of your brain is reptilian. It is um, kind of computer-like. It's, 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 it's only function is, hey, there's a bad guy, do something. But it can't, it can't help you really with the doing of it. That's your job. So what often happens is we're in this position where we feel deeply not okay. We've not had our needs met for some period of time. And your brain is like, oh my God, let me just bring up all of these memories of, well, this bad thing happened and that and this, and what about this? And what about that? And we're noticing all the negative things in our environment and our inner environment, our brain and body. There's all these alarm bells going off and the brain is like, well, I don't really know what to do other than just let's, let's end this. Right? So it's really common to end up in a place where your brain is cycling these thoughts and, and that the bottom line of where it's kind of trying to get you to is curled up in a ball somewhere in a dark place of just having given up on life or into suicidal ideation, which is a lot more common than you, than you think, most likely. It's very, very common. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's a, it's a logical solution to a brain that's like, well, I've learned that life doesn't feel safe. I'm not okay. And I don't know how else to end this other than let's just leave life or give up on it and hide. Those are the only solutions it has. That's it. And that's where we come in. And a lot of times it feels like our brain is attacking us in this process and trying to stop us from change. Because in order to move into a healthy place, we need to do things and believe things and feel things we've never felt before that are unfamiliar. That feels unsafe. Also, when you're in this state where the brain is like, okay, if I just tell you about all the scary things, then that protects you from them. If you walk away when you feel like you're being chased by a tiger and go smell some flowers, if you elevate your mood, if you think positive thoughts, your brain's like, well, you're not being scared. Fear protects you. Go back and be scared. It's going to try to protect you from the positive experiences that you need in order to feel okay, right? And that's where acting greater than you feel in really understanding brain function and brain science so that you can step into a new perspective of understanding like, thank you, brain. I see where you're coming from but it actually is safe to have these positive experiences. I can create a positive, safe experience for myself where my needs get met regularly and I do feel okay. And it requires that we stop believing the false messages. But that's why we have those, those kinds of attack patterns where it feels like our brain is attacking us even though it's meant to protect us. So hopefully that clears that up and helps you feel like your experience is not crazy because it's not, it's just human.